It's been said a portrait is a record of an encounter between a photographer and their subject. A single image capturing an energy, nuance and intimacy. It's a fine art with few masters. But among them is Toronto native Christopher Wall, who's photographed everyone from the Pope to the President. And while Christopher's images jump off the page, just wait till you meet the man himself. Ask me a question, boss. Let's talk. Let's chit chat. Portrait photographer by trade, sir. 16 by 9. Global news. Hey, vous parlez français? Oui. Blah, blah, blah. Come on, little buddy. Let's go. If you could capture Christopher Wall's energy and develop it on film, this is what it would look like. Acclaimed as lush, striking, and soulful, his images have graced the pages of every major Canadian magazine as well as most of the elite publications in the U.S. Vanity Fair, Newsweek, Time, Life, The New Yorker. Go, ready? The magic in his pictures comes from the controlled chaos of his mind. Oh my God, what am I doing? At once magnetic and frenetic. Quick, I'm going back to the squirrel. The squirrel drinking ice. It's a thirsty squirrel. Let's Google Carolyn. This is you. Do you think the young squirrel's tongue is warm enough to melt the ice? Observing a Christopher Wall photo session is like sitting in the audience for a stand-up comedy routine. Oh, why, hello. So I'm, like, scared for my television life. I should have made, like, a Gatorade phone call this morning. And after a long bit of shooting, don't mind me. Here is him pacing around with all these words. Here we go. Ready? Can we do this again? This is my whole bad side. That's really, so this is a horrible side. He calls it the Chris Wall Show. The Chris Wall Show is a little tiring, personally. Like, oh my God, I roll my eyes. A theatrical dance choreographed to distract and disarm. It's like a constant chatter. Maybe it's the art of distraction that I don't want them thinking about something else, or maybe I'm thinking them I want them to do this, and I'm looking at their eyebrows and their eyes and their cheeks and their nose. And <laughs> Hence, it's exhausting. But it works. Oh my gosh, shoot me dead. How did you learn how to shoot? I didn't. Did you ever take a photography course? No. In fact, he's never had another job. Oh, like I need fashion advice. And despite his propensity for humor, privately, Wall takes his work very seriously. You're not just going out to make a pretty picture. That's half the problem with giving a shit, pardon my French, is that, like, I lose sleep over quality work. Although he shrugs off the notion that he's a perfectionist, his drive for the perfect image has made him one of the most sought-after photographers of our time. Okay. Ah, right? Seen at a photo shoot for Toronto Life magazine when MP Olivia Chow delays her return to Ottawa <laughs> to make time for Christopher. So beautiful. Free as a bird. Daniel Neuhaus is Toronto Life's photo editor. So he sent you back all your images and said... Sometimes he'll send one photo and say, this is the shot. And well, he'll be like, on. I don't make you send it. At a photo shoot, you shoot dozens of photos, but he Hundreds back, sometimes. He'll send back only one and say, use this? Really? Yeah. Is he the only photographer that does that? Yeah, but he's earned that. This is making me nervous. This guy makes me nervous. You I'm starting to not trust. It's Wall's own vulnerability that is often reflected in his subjects. He opens a door to their melancholy, their mischief. In turn, his portraits have opened a door to him, to people and places that are off limits to most. It was the one picture that kind of stood out that made her look like just this normal person just hanging out and kind of a little, oh, almost like, what do I do next, a little bit. He tells great stories. He's got the last word every time. He carries a knife. I shouldn't even say this. Don't piss Keith Richards off. He will stab you right in the side. She's very beautiful. You wonder, like, the difference of a model or one that's, like, really good at it is the ones that are really good at it are really good at it. 
She kept asking, how old are you? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I did. How old would he have been there? 4,000. <laughs> it's really incredible. This is supposedly the last time he walked off an aircraft, which it doesn't look like he's doing much walking. Over his 20 years behind the lens, he's captured princes and presidents, actors and activists. And yet, some of the images he's most proud of are his most intimate. I take photographs of my children sleeping. That's Keith. Keith is his four-year-old son. Charlie, his eight-year-old daughter. Together with his wife, Ashley, they make a home in downtown Toronto where he regroups before returning to the world of royal tours, concert tours, and press junkets. Is there a shoot you'd want to do over? Most of them, without question. Good pictures are really hard to make. It's so difficult. How many good photos do you think you've taken? I hope I could count them on two hands, not just one. It's crazy. 10 good photos in a 20-year career. My standard of good is really high. Photo director of Maclean's magazine, Andrew Tolson. You look at somebody like Chris's photographs, and you know you know it's a Chris Wall photograph. How? It's hard to define exactly, but Chris usually comes back with something surprising. Wall has a name for it. Like awkward, decisive moments of people doing nothing. Awkward, decisive moments of people doing nothing. I think my work's kind of based on awkward, decisive moments of people doing nothing. Others, like the photo curator of the Art Gallery of Ontario, Sophie Hackett, call it a sixth sense that allows Wall to catch those in-between moments. When you first came across this image, what did you think? Yeah, it's just, wow, that's just, of course, like, boom. It's a great one. Like his most famous portrait, the Queen. Do you know if she's seen it? No, but it was called in by the National Portrait Gallery in London, to which I received a letter saying we've decided to go with another picture of the Queen with her eyes closed. I kept it. I have a don't fire me file. <laughs> and I put that in there. The image is one of three of walls that are now part of the gallery's permanent collection and will be featured next month in an exhibit of portrait photography. Whose company is he in now? Yusuf Karsh, Richard Avedon, Irving Penn. These are the biggest names in portrait yeah, photography yeah, they are. in the world. Chris is an illustrious company. You know what everybody said to me? What's that? How come he's not in New York or LA? He's the guy that people pluck. Yeah, no, there's a couple of, there's a couple of personal reasons, particularly. Are they called Keith and Charlie? I don't know. It's, now I feel like I'm going to die talking about it. It's little Charlie's heart. That's one reason. She's kind of uninsurable. Charlie was born with a form of congenital heart disease called double outlet right ventricle. On day one, we found out she needed to be rushed to sick kids. There was like three months of waiting for a first surgery that I wouldn't bless on my worst enemy. I'd prefer to live in this country and let her medical care be taken care of until maybe Obamacare gets figured out. You have sacrificed opportunity in your no, career. No, 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 there's no sacrifice by any means. No, 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 have sacrifice you? surely is not the word. I could move to the moon if I wanted. Bring little Charlie with me. We'd be fine. Totally. Today, Christopher Wall is a photographer who is continually growing, as is the list of people who want to commission his talent. How is this television worth any, anything for you, really? Do you ever sit back and reflect? Four royals, a president, a prime minister. It's not bad for a career. <laughs> no. Oh, my heavens. No, I'll be forgotten in two seconds. It's the complete opposite. My brain is a massive buzz of all these great things I intend to do in the future, and not what I've done in the past. No way. But while he may not take anything for granted... Let's go take a picture of the camera guy. We're not wrapping this up? It's a safe bet there'll be many encore performances of The Chris Wall Show. Well, it's been a pleasure having you guys. Cheers. Straight vodka. Highly encouraged. And before we leave you tonight, there's been an important development in a story we first brought you four weeks ago on 16 by 9 about those tiny magnets that have been hurting kids who swallow them. Well, Health Canada has now decided to ban them, and our Beatrice Politi has this update. The 
They're tiny, shiny, very powerful magnetic beads. Just about irresistible for both adults and kids to play with. And sometimes with near deadly results. When six-year-old Megan wasn't feeling well, her mother Kelly thought she had the flu. She woke up screaming. She was saying, my tummy is so sore. She was really, really uncomfortable. Megan had swallowed 19 tiny magnets because she thought they looked like candy. Dr. Brian Cameron performed emergency surgery to get them out. And they'd created four holes in the, in the stomach and the intestine that we had to repair. The magnets are about 20 times stronger than other magnets. They're force so powerful, they can find each other inside the body. When Joseph was three years old, he swallowed five of them. Dr. Matt Strickland was at the hospital when Joseph was brought in. When you get a hole in your gastrointestinal tract, it's a chance for bacteria to spread, to go places where they shouldn't be. And that can make people very sick. They can become septic, which is a, a term meaning system-wide infection, and from there they can die. Both children had surgery and recovered, but their cases are just two of a growing number of children being rushed to the operating room to remove these powerful magnets. Health Canada had put out advisories warning of the magnet dangers. Health Minister Leona Gluka now says that wasn't enough. We will soon be taking steps to remove products from the marketplace that contain small, powerful magnets that put the safety of our children at risk. Canada is following in the footsteps of the U.S., Australia and New Zealand by pulling the magnets off shelves. That removal, however, won't solve the problem, at least not right away. <laughs> Uh, at this point, there are uh, you know, millions of small magnets that have already been sold and are already in, in people's homes. So I think that uh, although banning may help uh, choke the supply somewhat, uh, I think education is going to be the other big pillar. And that is our broadcast for tonight. This week on our website, global16by9.com, you can find a conversation with the producer of our story on space tourism. Be sure to look for that. Until next Saturday, I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.